All right, Sisters fans, well, we are talking Season 6, Episode 4, entitled Face the Fire. And um, just thank God that despite the constant heavy rain that's been happening in my area, I was able to watch the episode without any issues. And the live stream I did last night, which was almost an hour long, apparently there were no issues there either. Um, people could see and hear me the entire time, so I'm grateful for that. But my goodness, uh, this particular episode, it, look, you, you know, one thing I've made clear on this channel is I don't try to talk bad or, you know, just, you know, go in on actors. That's, that's not what I do. I'll talk about how maybe things were poorly directed, but in terms of acting, let me put it this way. It's not just me who feels like this particular, this particular episode didn't have the greatest per performances. And that's, and that's putting it nicely. Um, I believe after I did a, um, you know, I looked at the timestamp of when everybody started arriving at the salon. And also, it is literally pouring rain right now, so if you hear some background noise, that's what it is. Uh, I think around the 12 and a half minute mark is where we go to the salon, where it's Aaron and Gary, and then all the way up until about the uh, 20, 25 minute mark. So that's about 13 minutes of all the characters standing outside of the salon. I think with all the ugly crying that was going on in the episode, there should have been some eye drops or something because some of these characters, you could tell they were trying as hard as they could, but there just weren't any tears coming out. And I'm just thinking, I mean, I really feel this scene could have been put together better. Um, I know that some of the episodes from season six so far have not been directed by Tyler Perry. Uh, I believe this episode was directed by Armani. Um, let me get the name here. Cause I lit, uh, or Ortiz, Armani Ortiz, which I believe he, uh, this person, I don't know if that's a male or female name. Um, this person has directed, I think, uh, bulk of the episodes of season six thus far, but basically the person in charge. I feel like there should have been more time put into the scene because you all know I haven't been the biggest Karen fan for quite a number of seasons at this point, but this is supposed to be one of the main, and look, 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 I know the promos for season six and other material ruined the mystery of Karen's death, all right, but I'm talking about from an in-universe perspective, the women have lost Ha, you know, have lost one of their best friends, one of their own, one of their sisters. And I felt like this scene, when I look, when I went to look back at it, I was laughing my ass off more than actually feeling any sort of emotion. You know, I, I feel like this scene should have been like a gut punch. Like, yo, I mean, even though I didn't like Karen like that, I didn't want her to die. This is this is so upsetting. But I was just laughing. And then last night around 3 a.m., when I was um, going back through some scenes of the episode for context and some notes, I was laughing my ass off at one particular scene when they were talking about some sort of like orange soda incident from college. And then Sabrina was like, and we didn't talk for three weeks after it. And then out of nowhere, Andy went. <laughs> and then she leaned over to Fatima and Fatima rolled her eyes. I don't know why, but that particular outburst, it had me dying because I'm just like, are we supposed to be taking this seriously? And then even crazier was the way that Karen just randomly strolled up to the shop and just cut and everybody went like, wait, what? I don't know why, but I was just laughing my ass off of this. And even worse 
was the green screen effect, particularly on the side of the uh, set where it was Pam, Andy, and Fatima. I don't know why, but that just looks so bad. And I saw the flash a couple of days ago, so it was really off-putting to see that kind of effect. Like, I... This episode, even, I feel like this score is a bit too high, but I will give it a 5 out of 10. If I was judging it based solely off of the comedic element because I was laughing my ass off during certain scenes, it would easily get like a 15 out of 10, but I will give it a 5 out of 10. I don't think a lot of these characters came off as likable, and this was easily, without a shadow of a doubt, the worst Pam episode of the entire series. So, and look, this this won't even be like a traditional episode review where I review things in order and whatnot because about half of the episode was focused on the salon drama and then the final minutes of the episode were all the girls talking about it and things pretty much played out the way I predicted. First of all, in terms of predictions, yesterday uh, or the day before yesterday, I posted a video about Logan. I'm like, why is this man so determined to put Sabrina... And Maurice behind bars. And I said that, you know, in universe, there has to be some explanation. Like maybe he has a job promotion on the line or something like that. But yeah, uh, it turns out that the reason he's so determined to, you know, slap the cuffs on anybody to go to jail for the bank robbery would be for the sake of his promotion. But here's the thing, though. He literally told Q, I looked at the security footage from the airport and it looks really bad for you. You're in this man's car. You're the one that pulls out a gun on him. And the reason I'm not going to arrest Maurice is because he can, like, show that, hey, you're the one who tried to fire at him. And as a result, you're going to be put away, meaning that you won't be able to testify as a witness against Sabrina and Maurice in his bank robbery case. And I'm thinking, so Logan is competent enough to look at that security footage and know what's going down in regards to the Q shooting. However, he listened to the quote-unquote confession that Q got on tape of Maurice and wasn't able to say, you know what, this is a flimsy, this is a flimsy ass confession and this man is clearly being sarcastic. For someone who's going for a promotion, you would think he would make more of a concrete case like, look, if I bring this evidence to my superiors, I need to make sure this is something that is clearly fact and not something anybody with an ounce of common sense can see through. So I really was not feeling this scene at all. But thankfully, it did not last too long. Apparently, um, Q was high. Oh, yeah, he was high on the job. He had marijuana in the system. And not to mention the nurse said Q's just fine. So basically, Q, you need to get your ass back to work. And even I was like, but damn, he was just shot. Get your ass back to work. And that was pretty much it. That was uh, the first scene there. Okay, then we get to an interesting, interesting scene. So Bio and Sabrina come back from there. What was it? Lunch and everything was going fine. And I mean, I ain't gonna lie. kind of looked like they may have been going in for a kiss. Um, And right, <laughs> right as they were having an intimate moment, because, you know, Bio was just showering Sabrina with uh, compliments and whatnot. We have Maurice come in, and at first I thought it was Calvin. I honestly thought, oh man, it's Calvin. But Maurice comes in, and this was a very awkward, intense scene. And I rewatched it because some people were like, oh, Maurice was doing too much, and you know, Bio, maybe he was offended by it. I, I mean, look, we've seen Maurice do a lot. We know he does the most. But in this case, it's like, like he said, uh, you know what? Um, what is it? Bio? You said call you Bio? I was just trying to thank you. And yeah, he did crack a couple jokes because he is Maurice. But in my opinion, and this is just my take. You, you. I mean, hey, it's just my perspective of it. It almost felt like this scene was intense and meant to be acted out in a way where it's like, oh wow, yeah, he's homophobic because I think it was last season where there was a similar scene where Maurice and Bio were talking about the Maurice situation, and it seemed like he was being very judgmental. But here's the thing. He said, no, I'm not homophobic or anything. It's the fact that 
he would associate himself with someone like Q. So basically, Bio's rant last season was meant to be, oh, well, no, you know, people who love, you know, people of the same gender, it, yay, that's, that's not why I'm mad. It's the fact that he would associate with someone like Q who's a thief and whatnot. So he wasn't sure how to judge Maurice's character. I mean, things, I don't really know what to say about this scene, folks. I, I honestly don't know. When I first saw it, I'm like, oh, no, don't, no, don't give us this forced, you know, homophobia thing as a way to push Sabrina over to Calvin. And not to mention, you know, as soon as Bio left, you had Maurice talking about ignorance and, you know, people are like that. I'm like, oh, wait, it is Pride Month. So the title, like, slipped that in there as a whole thing. I don't really know, but I I didn't really know what to think of that. Um, And I'm trying to, like, cover everything outside of the whole salon stuff. But honestly, that's about it. Uh, But, yeah, the, the, the setup was weak. It really was. So the sneak peek that BET released yesterday evening was simply the opening scene of the episode where Pam is just saying that Karen's dead and I, I will admit out of all of the emotional actors in this episode I think Zach well, even though he was doing way too much and I will get to Zach Zach was doing way too much but I think he was a standout in this scene Fatima's facial expressions alone were enough to keep me invested Pam was making some ugly ass faces but damn it if she had some more eye drops or something, then I feel like she would have been a standout. Um, Danny, she was doing all right. But in terms of like Sabrina and especially Andy, I just wasn't feeling it, especially that opening scene at the law firm. A Andy got one tear out before the opening title sequence. Uh, Andy did get one tear out. I'm just like, Lord have mercy. Not even three minutes in the episode. It's okay. Fatima, can you drive faster? Andy, I am driving. And then when Pam said, not as fast as Zach. And Fatima was like, I know. I'm like, Lord, here we are. Not even, barely 120 seconds in the episode. And Pam already starting some shit. Because Zach just bolted from the salon. I mean, from the law firm to go down to the salon. And, you know, he's speeding off. And then Fatima's behind with Pam and uh, Andy. And then from there, they get to the salon, and I don't even know what to say, because most of the stuff I said over the past, you know, week, because of the promos and whatnot, when Zach gets there, he's like, Karen in there? Karen! First of all, if she is in there, she's obviously burnt to a crisp, and how the hell is she going to answer? Let me just say, I have no defense for Zach at all. At all. Now, now first, you know, secondly... For anybody who's been like, you know what, Jeremy, you're biased. You always go in on Karen and, you know, over the past season or so, you've been going in on Fatima. But whenever Zach fucks up or does something, you kind of gloss over it because you're a man and you're biased. If you follow me on Twitter and you saw my tweets from last night, I don't ever want to hear anybody again say you're biased towards Zach because I went in on his ass. He deserved every bit of it. And also... I'm not biased because I go in on everybody, some more than others. It depends on how much they fuck up. But yeah, with Zach, him having an emotional response, I don't blame him at all. But the thing that made this even worse was the fact that Fatima was standing right there for the entire thing. See, I thought, you know, Fatima might show up a little later with the, um, you know, Andy and Pam. I mean, excuse me. Yeah, Andy and Pam. But no. She was literally there soon. Karen! Uh, 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 uh. And then, uh, okay, okay. Like I said earlier in the video, I don't think all these characters needed to be at the scene. What did I say last week? Aaron did not need to bring or call Gary to get him to come down to the salon. All he had to say over the phone was, here's the situation. There was a fire at the salon. They say there's a body in there. Can you call your contacts in order to, you know, get some information? That's all he had to do. There was no need of Gary being in this scene whatsoever. Cal Calvin, at least they gave the reason that Sabrina sent him a message and asked him to come down. Preston just walked into the scene. I mean, I guess we're to assume that maybe he was at the grocery store or something like that. And he was loading up his uh, car or whatever. 
And then he saw Danny out there. It's like, hey, what's going on? But there was no reason to have all these damn characters, you know, hooting and hollering because I'm just looking like most of these people don't even know Karen like that. I mean, okay, so we had about 10 people in attendance. And, okay, so you had Gary, you had Preston, you had Calvin, you had Maurice. That's what, almost half the people outside of the salon right there. Then you had Fatima, Pam, Danny, Sabrina, Andy. That's five. And I feel like I'm missing somebody. But, um... That's about half the people there don't even really know Karen like this. And, oh yeah, did I mention Aaron? Yeah, so six. So yeah, we had ten people out there. And I'm just sitting here like, no, we didn't need everybody here. I mean, it was cool to see everybody there, but the setup felt so weak. Like, first of all, on their way to the salon, I think it was Fatima that called Danny from Andy's phone. And then they spent a good five minutes going back and forth. Come to the salon. For what? Come to the salon. What'd you do? Come to the salon. Is Andy there? Is she crying? Come to the salon. For what? Just come to the salon. Man, come on now. So then we got Sabrina getting a call. And look, to be fair, Maurice was standing right next to her. So even though he didn't need to come, it kind of made sense because it was an emergency and he wanted to be there for Sabrina so it makes some sense so then we find out that Sabrina sent Calvin a message why Sabrina didn't even know what she was going to the salon for so why did she message Calvin now granted at least there's a reason for him showing up Preston just having to walk on set. He's like, well, hey, everybody. I feel like Trinity was like, oh, oh the, uh, all the cast is just gathering together. Let me show up and let me go over there and see what's going on. Hey, what's happening? <laughs> I don't, I'm sorry, but it's, this was so weird. <laughs> um, And then he's like, Danny, are you okay? And then it's like, Preston, read the parking lot. Not the room, but the parking lot. Everybody, well, most of the people are trying to form a tier. And so obviously things aren't okay. So... This scene played out exactly like I thought it was. Every, so every time somebody comes up, what happened? What happened? We don't know. It was a fire. What happened? Danny, what happened? Sabrina, I don't know anything. I just got here. And it just kept rinsing and repeating. And this scene felt so dragged out. And they were trying with all their might to get some emotion. And it just wasn't happening. You know, and then like um, the whole orange soda story. I mean, it did make me go, yeah, this is another reason why I wish we had a college episode flashback or something, because these moments that the girls talk about, I like to see it play out. All right, but in any case, the um, medical examiner comes out and says who's the next of kin or who's family, and I'm like, so you're not going to tell them if it was a male or female, you're not going to give us any information, and everybody just starts bawling, and then Karen just showed up like she, you know, took a cigarette break behind the set and just came on the set and like what are everybody doing out here and <laughs> again the cg i mean the green screen was hilarious but so then this fool zach i mean from being the one to call miss lisa also aaron wanted smoke with everybody he was going in on pam and then you know he was like, oh yeah so now you care zach and i'm like wow okay and then he's like don't call miss lisa what do you know about this you, this is family i'm like zach zach and the more I looked at Fatima, the more I'm like, you know what? I ain't got nothing to say. I mean, Zach, you done, you done dug your own grave here. I mean, the way she just disappeared as soon as Karen showed up, I'm like, yep. I don't blame you. I mean, she probably going to have that moving truck outside of the house by the time Zach gets back. And I don't blame her one bit. Oh, man. This first half of the episode was something else. Um, then the women just decide to leave. Uh, oh, yeah. Also, it was said that apparently, and I already talked about this based on the character bio that came out for this guy. I forgot his name. Was it David or something? He was the one who owns the shop, like, right next to Karen. So he saw what was going on, went inside and saved her, went to the hospital. And I'm thinking, she's okay. That's good. But, you know, that just kind of felt random. No, you know, she didn't have to stay 
for, you know, I mean, she obviously got examinations because she's okay, but still, it just feels a bit abrupt. But I think they were like handing out food to the homeless and some of them were in like the back alleyway behind the salon and the fire apparently started from there and then it kind of reached the roof of the salon and got inside. I mean, I didn't catch that the first time I watched the episode live. I mean, I thought like, wait, if the fire started in the back, then when she opened the door, how come it was on the inside? I don't know. Not to mention, how did that dude's body get in there? Did he break into the salon or something? It wasn't really adding. I mean, plus, the well, maybe the body was like at the back. I, I don't know. We'll just, who cares? So apparently it wasn't Jennifer, that crazy chick that was going off on Aaron slash John which I feel like was a missed opportunity. So yeah, so the girls are like, screw this, we're about to bounce. And I'm like, I mean, all y'all came down there and just gonna leave the men like that? Okay. And then Gary, oh yeah, also my favorite part was like, when Preston was trying to, you know, help Danny calm down and she's like, I got it. And then Dan, uh, Gary just swooped in like, hey, you know, let's let her handle things her own way. It's like, hey, I got this. She's like, oh, excuse me. So then from there, um, you know, the guy's like, hey, um, we're going to have to use the shop for the rest of the day to continue our investigation. And then, you know, the girls drag Karen because she wants to see how bad it is. But apparently there was no insurance or something like that, which is weird. Also, Zach, the way this man just scooped her up for that hug and was like, oh, and then, you know, he was doing way too much from like, you know, caressing her hair. It's like, hey, don't worry, I'll help you build this shop back up. And I'm like, bro, are you freaking serious right now? So then, after the ladies leave, you got Pam just running her damn mouth going in on... Now, a lot of people are like, you know what? Pam was telling the truth. She was. She was. Yeah, but the thing was, nobody gives a damn about Pam at this moment because Zach was acting a damn fool, but Pam is the reason that all of this shit happened. She was the one running her mouth about... Karen being dead. Also, on top of that, oh yeah, um, Zach did call Miss Lisa, but left a voicemail. But yeah, Zach was doing way too much, like from the yelling and the boo hooing, but doing like you know three to five hugs or something. It was just way too much over the top. But then Pam just decides to run him out like y'all ain't nothing. And then Pre Preston's like, hey Zach, I'm sorry about this. And then you sorry too. And he's like, excuse me. Oh, you know what? All y'all ain't worth nothing. Somebody give me a ride back to my car. And I love Preston like, are you serious right now? She's going to need a ride here. And yeah, Pam was just not likable at all during this scene. So then we go over to Aaron calling Pam and ap apologizing for going off on her, for blaming her. But Pam, you know, is trying to make it feel. I don't know why Pam is acting like this still ain't her fault. And some, you know, she isn't, she doesn't hold some responsibility about this. I mean, look. If I look, if I'm wrong about something and I go out of my way to apologize, what you're not going to do is tell me to beg and all because I will hang up the phone right then and there. I ain't nothing else to say. Uh, so then we got probably my favorite Angela scene in the entire series and Zatima. Let me just say this. The moment I saw Angela and Fatima at that bar, I rolled my eyes. I'm like, Lord, here we go. You got Angela who's going to add fuel to the anti-Zach fire. But no, she actually played devil's advocate and made valid points in regards to, well, Fatima, don't forget about how you acted with Ian, you know, when you ran into him in the park and he told you about his cancer and whatnot. And I'm like, thank you, Angela. I mean, but let me say it this way. Fatima talked about feeling abandoned and Zach did abandon her. Fatima stood by his side at Heather's apartment and was holding this man together as he was breaking down after seeing the circumstances that his son is growing up in and then kept him from, you know, doing something illegal like kidnapping his son and then said, hey, let's go back to the office, talk with Andy or another lawyer and get custody. She was standing by her man. And what did he do the moment he heard that Karen is dead? He up and left her quick, fast, in a hurry at the law firm. And then when they got to the salon, a lot of people were like, you know what, why wasn't Fatima comforting Zach? You know, um, she was over there holding on to Andy and whatnot. 
if Fatima was anywhere near Zach, she would have rightfully popped his ass in the head. Calm your ass down. You don't need to be crying like this. But like Fatima says, I don't want to be that bitch. It's like, oh, you know what? I'm mad because you're, you, you know, you were upset about your ex, quote unquote, dying in a fire. And I think my favorite line of the episode, the salon caught on fire. Fatima, you didn't. And I'm like, well, I mean, with Fatima's track record, you can't blame Angela for thinking that. But no, I'm glad that this is one of my favorite Fatima is processing things. This is probably the first time I'm like, Fatima, I see exactly why you stepped away from the situation. You processed the way you felt because I would not blame you if you went smooth the fuck off on Zach right now because he deserves every lot, la every last bit of it. So, um... From there, you go over to, and also, Angel looked good in that brown dress, just chocolate goodness. I don't know why. Same with uh, Karen. You know, I don't know what it was, but these two just look fine as hell in the episode. All right, so we're over at the penthouse, and the ladies, th okay, this scene was a bit slow. Uh, what, it lasted from about the 32-minute mark to, like, the 39-minute mark. So, basically, this was the end of the episode. Um... This gave me season one vibes. The girls, minus Karen because she's pregnant, all hitting the vape pen, getting high and just reminiscing. And I will admit, yeah, they almost lost one of their own. So it was good to see hugs and laughs and whatnot. It, it was good stuff. I did. I did. This was a good way to close the episode. Like I said, it felt slow, but to see the women just bonding, I did enjoy it. I really did. But then... Things took a turn for the worse when Danny started running that damn mouth. She was the one. Oh, did you see Zach and the way she was acting? Mm, Fatima. Oh, man, if her looks could kill. Like, I'd love to be a fly in the room in that house tonight to see how things are going with that. And Aaron was just sitting. I mean, excuse me. Karen was just sitting there all smug. It's like, well, you know what they say. Um, sorrow or crisis will allow somebody's true feelings to show. And I got to give props for Andy because in the same way, that Karen, I mean, Fatima knows that, okay, yeah, Andy, I know you can't talk about Karen. She keeps the same respect when it comes to Fatima. But then, you know, Karen's like, oh, yeah, you want to change subject because uh, you you just protecting your friend. And I'm like, Karen, let's not even do this. Let, come on. It, we're, we're happy to see you, but let don't, don't, don't go back to that. But Karen was smug because it's like she knows after that hug in the wake Zach was acting that he still has feelings so I mean look as much as I want to be like you know what Karen you're just reading into things but based on that performance that Zach put on it's like I don't blame her for thinking that she has a chance I'm not saying I want these two back together but I'm just saying the way Karen uh, the way Zach was carrying on carrying on about Karen I can't really blame her so from there, um, they do eventually change subjects. They try to shift it to Danny, who once again tries to deflect. It's like, no, this ain't about me. But, you know, we talk, she talks about Preston and the whole fiance, bull crap, yada, yada, yada. But then the episode ends on a weird note because Karen says that at the hospital, she found out who the father was. And while some people think that's kind of random, remember, she did say that the next day, she was going to go ch check it out. This is when they were at the bar trying to comfort Danny. So let me put it this way. I did not care for the whole who the daddy is thing because now that's going to be stretched out for the next few episodes. I already know. But in any case, um, that's the episode in a nutshell. I think that acting wise, it could have been done a lot better. So yeah, th th this didn't really work for me. I mean, I did have some fun moments, but overall... Zach, I can't defend your ass. I really can't. There's nothing I can say. I I, I got nothing. I, I got nothing. Let me know your thoughts in the episode on the episode in the comment section below. Like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.